After we figured out deep learning, we then applied that to everything. Inside Google, we were approving all of our ads, looking at all videos that do not comply to the community guidelines. We did, um, you know, all of our um, data center management was using AI. By 2006, we became even more ambitious. We said we're going to build self-driving cars. You know, 2013, we acquired DeepMind. DeepMind could win every video game on the planet and so on and so forth. Every task, believe it or not, for the last 25 years, every task we've ever assigned to a computer, it became the world champion at. So it became better than human intelligence at every single task. My personal view is 2016 was the year where AI actually happened. So in 2016, quite a few surprising developments happened. One of them was AlphaGo. AlphaGo was an AI that became the world champion in the game Go, which is the most complex strategy game known, known to humankind. But it wasn't just that AlphaGo won. It won in a very human way. It, it took some very strategic, very intuitive decisions that were completely unexpected. It really thought like a human, and it became the world champion. That is the same year where we did AlphaFold, and I know most of you in the medical profession would understand the complexity of protein folding. So, you know, by the time we issued AlphaFold, Alpha, uh, you know, folding proteins was a very complex problem that would take a PhD team, their entire thesis, basically. We managed to fold 220 million proteins within a week, just by, uh, by helping the machine understand how protein folding happens. And that was the year where one of my dear colleagues, Jeffrey Hinton, who's known as the, as the godfather of AI, uh, Jeffrey came to us one day and said, I think we're doing this wrong. Why are we killing the bad students? Maybe we should just tell them. And that was such an interesting idea. You know those ideas where you, know, you hear it and you go like, yeah, well, that, that's so obvious. But Jeffrey's view was, if one of them says it's an eight when it's actually a six, don't delete the code. Just tell them it's a six, okay? And tell them what would you change in your own programming to see it as a six. And that was known as reinforcement learning, and reinforcement learning led us to where we are today. We, you know, reinforcement learning was taken by OpenAI to develop ChatGPT, and everything else that, was, that happened since 2016 was based on that idea of basically you can teach them with positive reinforcement. As I said, everything we've ever assigned to an AI it became the world champion at. Of course, there are tens of types of intelligence, but if you take one type of intelligence, which is linguistic and knowledge-based intelligence, which is what all of those language models are, I would tend to believe that the most intelligent being on planet Earth, in terms of linguistic intelligence, is a language model. It's not a human anymore. By the end of last year, ChatGPT was measured at 155 IQ. 155 is equal to Elon Musk. Einstein was 163. And so when you really think about it, if you had put ChatGPT through an IQ test, it would have come out as one of the most intelligent people in history. Of course, there are still people that are at 230 and so on. Uh, the more interesting side of this is we put them through the bar exam and the, you know, whatever finance exams and SAT, SATs and all of the different types of human exams, and they ace every single one of them. And believe it or not, they ace them even though those tests were actually not devised for a machine. So they measure the outcome, but for example, they don't measure the speed. They don't measure the number of languages you can do the test in. They don't measure the, you know, the breadth of the information that you can actually widen the test to and the machine will still do better than humans. So if you take an item like linguistic intelligence and knowledge intelligence, uh, they have beaten us, hands down.